All right, YouTube, as you saw in the title, uh, I'm gonna start documenting this little project I've got going here. We're gonna put a BMW inline six in a boat. So this is a project I've wanted to do for at least 15 years. Um, ever since I got into BMWs, I've always thought this would be a cool idea. I've always wanted one of these kind of like a uh, bow rider type, um, you know, ski boats. But uh, most of these smaller boats like this come with like a 4.3 liter GMC V6, like in a pickup, or they come with a four cylinder uh, cast iron push rod uh, GM industrial motor, which is what came in this boat. And uh, I just really don't like those engines. I just passionately hate that uh, 4.3 liter V6. I think they're junk. And uh, cast iron push rod inline four cylinder doesn't get me turned on either. So I've just always thought it would be cool to put a uh, BMW motor in one of these, either like an M50 or an M20. So uh, I'm wanting to do this for like 15 years and finally have the opportunity and the space and the time and the resources to do it. So uh, here we go. So I bought this boat. This is a 1995 uh, Forester 175 Sport or something like that. I bought this boat last fall. Um, I'm up in the upper Midwest here in Minnesota, and uh, these types of boats are just everywhere. You know, Minnesota's land of 10,000 lakes, and there are just thousands and thousands and thousands of these old boats out there, and they're worth just about nothing. Especially if they have any kind of mechanical problem, because marine mechanics are fucking expensive. So if you can find one of these boats that needs fiddling, needs engine work, needs a different engine, you can usually get them for just about free. And that's the case with this boat. So I uh, bought this boat last fall, and of course right before winter is the time to be buying this kind of stuff, because people are trying to get rid of it so they don't have to store it all winter. I bought this boat for 700 bucks. And it was a running driving boat with an outdrive and engine in it. Um, the guy that I bought it from didn't know anything about mechanics really. And uh, the carburetor needed some fiddling and he didn't know how to do the fiddling. So I bought it um, as a uh, might run kind of project boat. And uh, it did run just fine. It just needed the carburetor adjusted. And we had it on the lake last fall. Uh, right before the snow started falling with the girls and it was great fun and the really love this boat it handled wonderfully um, I think this is probably the nicest handling boat I've ever personally driven you could just turn it in like a 50 foot circle at 30 miles an hour it just really handled really great and I kind of fall in love with the boat um, I love the color I love this this uh, like the sweep of this windshield it's kind of like kind of looks like the rear window kick up on a on a BMW and I just thought, you know, the color scheme on this is like very, you know, late eighties and early nineties and it would look great with like, you know, turbo by BMW or something powered by BMW or something like that on the side. So anyway, I picked this boat up and uh, started taking it apart and get the old motor out of it. I do have another boat back here in the shed. I've owned this one for like 10 years. It's a LumaCraft. Uh, 175 tournament pro kind of a fishing boat and uh, I don't really do that much fishing to be honest but uh, I go out on the lake all the time I got two little girls I just started going out on the tube and uh, we like to take the boat out on the lake and go fishing a little bit and go to the beach and go swimming and uh, this boat it's a 90 horsepower outboard back here ignore the 75 horsepower uh, stickers on it. It's actually a 90. Um, this boat sucks for cruising on the lake and doing water sports and stuff because it's tiller and uh, constantly driving around trying to avoid all the people on the lake. So I wanted a uh, console steer boat, preferably an inboard outboard so I could do my BMW thing and uh, here's where we came. So uh, anyway, started taking the motor out of this, um, to kind of build my little dream boat thing that I've been thinking about for years, and uh, ran into a little bit of an issue back here. This boat has uh, plywood floors and plywood stringers, and there is absolutely nothing left of the stringers. I'll climb in here. The rest of the boat was actually really nice condition. 
and it ran great and like I said it handled great but once we got the engine out I started poking around in here to see what was left of the stringers and there is absolutely nothing I mean you can literally just pull handfuls out of here and uh the stringers are plywood which I, I didn't know anybody would make ever made a boat with plywood stringers, but here it is. So, um, and also the, uh, you can see like some of the floor structure is actually like oriented strand board. So not great. So, like I said, I kind of fell in love with this boat, but after I started working on it, I realized that I'm going to have to, oh, and there's some soft spots in the floor up here. You know, the floors kind of move and I'm, 100% certain that those stringers are rotten all the way to the front. So I got to thinking about this, like I'm gonna end up spending a year, you know, just replacing st the floors and putting stringers in this boat and doing fiberglass work and stuff that I just don't really wanna do. So uh, um, now we have two boats. So uh, what was nice about this boat, this boat came Actually, both of these boats, I should say, came with 140 horsepower, three liter GM cast iron four cylinders. It's a cast iron head, push rod motor. It's like an industrial engine. It's like a tractor engine, basically. Dates back to like the 1960s. This is a motor that came out of the red boat, the Volvo Penta. And uh, this motor came in the uh, Sea Ray there, but uh, they're Mercruiser on this one, but it's the exact same engine. So this Sea Ray here came with this Mercruiser Alpha Drive and uh, the Forester came with the Volvo Penta SX Drive. And um, the kind of the issue with these little boats like this, if you wanna make a good deal of power in them is that Almost all of these like 17, 18 foot power riders like exclusively come with Mercruiser Alphas and Mercruiser Alphas are junk and will not tolerate. Well, I shouldn't say they're junk. They're fine motors for, you know, the 140 horsepower four cylinder they came with. But if you try to put, you know, four or 500 horsepower with them, it's just not the right platform. They're just not strong enough to handle it. But uh, these Volvo Penta SX drives are extremely strong drives. And uh, some of these little boats back from the 90s, they do come with Volvo Penta SX drives. So uh, Mercruiser comes with, Mercruiser has two different drive sizes. They have an Alpha drive, which is like the small drive that they put on small boats. And then they have a Bravo drive. And Bravo drives are on big boats with, uh, you know, 350 V8s and larger or big block Chevys. But uh, a Mercruiser Bravo drive would be great on uh, project like this but the problem is, is in a, nobody ever put a Bravo drive in a small little boat like this but a uh, Volvo Penta SX drive like I said is about the same size and strength as a Bravo but they uh, Mer Volvo Penta only made one drive size so um, if you get a little boat like this with a Volvo Penta motor it comes with the strong drive so um, this Sea Ray here so this is a 1995 Sea Ray uh, 175 something or another model. And uh, I bought this boat also on Facebook Marketplace. It just showed up one day when I was looking. I paid 1500 bucks for it. And it came um, with the, uh, the gimbal housing was still on the back of the boat, the Alpha gimbal housing. And the engine was on a pallet. So uh, there's a freeze plug missing from the motor. So I think... The previous owner uh, didn't winterize it and it froze and popped the freeze plug out and uh, was probably brought it to a marine mechanic to get the motor pulled out and get freeze plugs put back in it and check the block for cracks or something and uh, probably figured out that it was going to cost $3,000 to fix this boat and they just weren't into it. So, like I said... These little boats are out, you know, these similar style of boats are just everywhere in Minnesota for very cheap because the uh, marine mechanics are very expensive and it costs an enormous amount of money to do anything on these boats if you don't do it yourself. 
So uh, I, I see boats like this at the local landfill all the time that are just laying on the ground that somebody pushed it off the end of the trailer and left it there. And usually when they're sitting on the ground at the landfill, the lower unit is missing off the outdrive. Or sometimes they're complete and you go and pull the engine cover off and they'll have a 4.3 liter with all the freeze plugs popped out of it. And, uh, or the, the, the carburetor is missing. So somebody took it to their, you know, couldn't get it started in the spring and took it to the marine mechanic and found out it was going to cost an arm and a leg to fix it. So they just bring them to the landfill. Um, so yeah, we are going to put a, uh, BMW M50 in here. Actually, I should say an, an S50. So, uh, I'm selling both of these old uh, Mercruiser and Volvo Penta motors. Um, I think once I sell both of these motors, of course, this one will be sold for parts because I have no idea what condition it is and it could have a cracked block or a cracked head from freezing. This one is a good running engine that I know run, good, runs good because I just had it on the lake last fall and I winterized it, so everything's fine there. Um, after I sell the parts that I don't need from both of these, I think I'll probably have both of these boats for free. Um, unfortunately, like I said, I'm really sad about it, but um, I don't think that this boat is worth any amount of money to anyone um, because it needs new stringers and new floors. So I have thought about just giving the boat away for free just put it on Facebook Marketplace and see if someone will come and get it. I'm sure somebody will come and buy it and it can sit in their yard for a decade rotting away while they do other things. But uh, the problem is, is I want this trailer that's under it. So this trailer is actually nicer than uh, the trailer on this Sea Ray. So I want to swap the trailers from these. So um, I could probably still give away the boat without the trailer, but that means I'm gonna have to bring it to somebody's house and dump it in their yard um, and bring the trailer home with me. And to be honest, I just don't wanna deal with it. So uh, unfortunately, it makes me really sad to say it, but this uh, Forester is probably going to be going to the landfill in a day or two. I've removed most of the parts that uh, would be of any value out of it. Um, you know, maybe somebody would want the windshield but to be honest, I don't really want to dick around taking the windshield off um, and then babysitting it on Facebook Marketplace for a year. So I think we're just going to cut our losses on the Forester. Well, actually, there's no losses on the Forester because I've already sold enough parts off the Forester that I got that boat for free. And I got a very expensive Volvo Penta SX drive with it or out of the deal for free. So... Uh, we'll look in the sea ray here. So the sea ray is in excellent condition. The sea ray actually has fiberglass stringers. And I believe the floors um, from like here out are all fiberglass. So there's nothing to rot in here. This These two center panels in here that they lift, they're like under floor storage, so you can lift them up and put skis and whatever in there. Those are uh, plywood, but I believe the rest of the floors in this boat are all fiberglass, so there is nothing to rot in it. And the uh, bow rider uh, seats are in really nice condition. These are actually the, the seats that were in the Forester. Somebody had recently bought nice new seats for that boat. Um, so I'm going to use them in here. I absolutely despise this green colored carpet and this uh, green colored bumper rail. So um, once I get the boat running, uh, that will be the next project is I'm going to re-carpet this probably either to red or to gray. And then uh, I will be, uh, the Sea Ray came with this like, this is the old engine cover. So the engine was in the center and then it had like two seats outboard of the engine. Um, I'm because I need a lot of this space for uh, intercoolers and stuff like that. I'm just going to build a straight across uh, firewall back here with like a probably like a teak wood deck um, top decking over the top of it. Um, but yeah, so I actually took 
Uh, this, this boat had hydraulic power steering in it. Um, I've actually never driven a boat with hydraulic power steering, but um, the uh, steering cable was locked up on this, the steering rack. So I took, this is the uh, steering rack and the steering wheel and the, uh, the red steering cable is out of the Forester. And then likewise, I took uh, the shifter and control unit uh, because I knew that that would work correctly with the Volvo Pentadrive. I took the steering and, and uh, shift control unit out of the Forester and, and uh, retrofit it into here as well. So, um, uh, yeah, so we're going to be putting the Volvo Penta drive in here. I've been working on that for the past uh, few days. This is actually the Mercruiser Alpha uh, uh, transom plate. So the interesting thing is that these, the Volvo Penta and this Mercruiser use the same bolt pattern where they go through the hull. Um, and of course I have right there laying on the ground, that's the transom plate for the Volvo Penta. I actually decided to use the Mercruiser uh, transom plate with the Volvo Penta gimbal assembly because uh, this the Mercruiser plate actually has, uh, it has uh, four more bolt holes going through the transom. And uh, we're gonna put quite a bit of power through this thing. So I thought more surface area and more clamping and more uh, bigger, heavier duty plate would be good. So I have already modified this uh, Mercruiser Alpha uh, plate to fit the Volvo Penta um, gimbal assembly. And then I machined, I had to machine these two pins uh, in the lathe to accept the uh, uh, steering assembly from the original Volvo Penta stuff. So anyway, and then also the other thing, uh, if I use this, if I use the Mercruiser um, transom plate, that will allow me, if I decide that I need that in the future, that I can put power steering back on this because the power steering rack from the Mercruiser will fit right on there. So what do we have planned for the engine here? So this is an, this is actually an M54 block that I had just laying around. I'm just using this for mock-up because it's light and easy to move around. Um, so this is the adapter assembly that I made for this. If you don't know about boats, this is the rubber coupler. This is actually a Mercruiser Alpha rubber coupler. So uh, there's like a, uh, a rubber disc in there clamped between um, this like uh, flywheel assembly and this inner spline so that there's like a little bit of movement it's rubber dampened and uh, the drive shaft from the out drive just slides right into that rubber coupler so to mount all of that to the engine we have a new flywheel that I designed in CAD and had machined so uh, this flywheel the only thing it does is drive the uh, rubber coupler and then uh, set this down. We have a stock automatic transmission BMW flex plate and the starter will drive off of the stock BMW M50 flex plate uh, to start the motor of course. And then uh, underneath here, oh, can't get it off. There. So then we have our adapter plate. So these uh, marine engines, they use like a uh, small block Chevy or LS or big block Chevy bolt pattern. So um, the Bell housing uses the same bolt pattern as a Chevy automatic transmission. So the bell housing will bolt onto the engine like that. And then these are the rear motor mounts. So those attach to the transom plate inside the boat. And then uh, we'll just need motor mounts for the front. 
So the actual engine that we're building to go in this is a, uh, I suppose it's a BMW S50 clone. It's actually an S, an M, sorry, an M52 block that is at the machine shop right now being bored out to 86 and a half millimeters. And then we're gonna put uh, an S50 crankshaft in it and S50 cams and uh, basically making a clone of an S50. So it'll be a belt motor with uh, forged connecting rods and forged pistons. And uh, um, that's at the machine shop right now, like I said, uh, and we're gonna put a turbo on this. So uh, I will show that in the next few videos here, but um, I'm actually adapting a uh, the turbo manifold off of an N55. Um, to work on an M52 head and uh, probably be water cooling the exhaust manifold because a N55 turbo manifold has like a water or a air jacket around the outside of it anyway. And then we got a uh, like a stage one upgraded turbo for the uh, N55 exhaust manifold. So the the turbo is like a uh, GT2860 or a GT2871. So it's like a you know, 450 or 500 horsepower turbo. Um, I think guys with that turbo on an N55 have made, uh, I want to say like 400, 425 horsepower to the tire. So uh, this will be like a maximum of like 400, and, like 400, 450 horsepower, which in a boat like this is going to be a lot. Um, that's probably enough power to go, I don't know, probably 80 or 90 miles an hour if you guy really wanted to. Um, and if you had it propped right, I'm probably not going to do that. I just want, like, you know, lots of uh, mid-range torque and horsepower, like 0 to 60 acceleration kind of stuff. This boat will probably be spend 95% of its time under 35 miles an hour. Um, but uh, we can make the power, so why not? Um, yeah, so I guess that's about all for this video. Um, when I get some more work done, I'll make another video. So this will be part one of the series, I guess. All right, thanks.